This video is a crash course about spring scheduled jobs. Scheduled jobs or scheduled tasks are a piece of business logic that should run on a scheduled basis, meaning every some period of time. And Spring and Spring Boot come together with a very nice and easy solution to just through some simple annotations tell Spring Container to run a particular method on a scheduled basis. Scheduled jobs are part of Spring Framework Core, so there's even no need to add any special dependency for that. We can just hit Generate Project button and open it in IntelliJ. Before we can start adding scheduled jobs, we have to enable it. And to do it, we have to put uh, Enable Scheduling Annotation on any of the configuration classes. You can add it on the main application class, but then it means that by default, this scheduling will be also enabled during unit test or rather integration test. And this may cause some problems, especially when you will be using spy beans or mock beans. So my advice is rather to take it out from here and create a dedicated class that can be called scheduling configuration and put this uh, enable scheduling over here. And if we would like to disable it during the tests, we can make this configuration class enabled only when the, there is a certain property there. So we can call this property scheduling enabled. And it depends if we want to make it enabled by default or not. So we can do that it should match if this property is missing. So it means that we don't specify it to enable it, but we have to explicitly disable it. And now I can put just a configuration annotation and we are pretty much good to go. We can turn any method on Spring Bean or Spring Configuration class into scheduled method just by adding a scheduled annotation on it. This method has to return void and has to have no parameters. So let's create a method that will print a current time. There I have to tell Spring in what intervals Spring should run this. And there are a couple of options. One is that we can say that the method should run with a fixed rate. And this means that it will run, in this example, every two seconds, but it will be every two, it will be two seconds between each invocation. And the first invocation starts immediately after context is up. So let's see how it works. If I now change it to make this method take longer, and I will do it in a very, very ugly way just by adding thread sleep. So we will make this method sleep for one second more. Now, if I restart it, not much will actually change. So the execution time of the job is not taken into consideration when we use fixed rate. Things are a little bit different if we use fixed delay instead. So fixed delay doesn't execute every two seconds between the invocation, but just the next invocation starts two seconds after the previous one. So in this case, it will not run every two seconds, but rather every three seconds. It's one second for the job execution, then it waits another two seconds. For both uh, fixed delay and fixed rate, we can also delay the initial first execution. So we can put the initial delay and we can put how much time it should wait after context gets up before the first execution starts. So let's make a pause for a second and make a summary of the absolute basics. Scheduling is not enabled by default. We have to enable it with enable scheduling. It's good to make it conditional on property so that we can later on disable with property. Scheduled jobs are the methods that are annotated with scheduled annotation. And there are a couple of ways we can decide how often the job should run. Two of them, the basic ones is fixed delay. With fixed delay, we decide what is the time between the last invocation end time and the next invocation start type. And in case of fixed rate, we decide what is the time between the job invocation so it completely ignores how long does the job actually take to run. We can delay the 
first job execution by specifying initial delay property. And for all of these three properties, we specify the values using milliseconds. Specifying these values in milliseconds becomes a little bit harder to read once we have uh, values that are greater than seconds. So you can imagine that, for example, if you want to run a job every 60 seconds, it becomes a 60,000 milliseconds. But what if we have to run it every one hour? It means that we have to do 60 minutes multiplied by 60 seconds multiplied by 1 thousand and it gives us 3,600,000. We can write it in just like that, but it's still like when you when you look at it, you have to think a little bit, what does it actually mean? So we can either just make it as a math expression, but it still leaves a little bit for the code reader to understand that this is actually 60 minutes, 60 seconds, and this is just a one second and milliseconds. So the alternative is that we can specify this fixed delays that all of these three properties using strings. So when we put here a fixed delay string, we can use a Java duration format. So this makes it a little bit easier to read because now I can say that I want to run this job every 10 minutes, for example, or every 60 minutes or every one hour. Using string variants of these properties gives us also one more option that we can externalize how often the job should run to a property file or also to environment variable depends, depends on our setup. But the most important thing is that it's not hard coded, so we can customize it without changing the application code itself. And the way to do it is to put here a spring expression that will reference a property. So we can call it just, just some job and we can call it, for example, a delay. And now if I open an application properties class and specify this property, I can either use milliseconds or I can also use this nice Java duration format. So let's say I will make it run every five seconds and now rerun the job. The Spring context on application startup will pick up this property and make this job run every five seconds. If we need to run jobs on some more sophisticated schedule, like for example, every minute between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. on Monday and Tuesday, or actually like any, any sophisticated time range expression you can think of, instead of using this fixed delays and fixed rate, you can use a cron expression. Scheduled job cron expression have format that comes from the Unix utility to run scheduled jobs. And it's even more confusing because the format is similar, but it's not exactly the same. So cron expression has six fields separated by a space. And the first field means seconds, minutes, hour, day of the month, month, and the day of the week. Asterisk is a special character that it means every. So this cron expression will run every second, any minute of every hour of every day. If we would like to run it every five seconds, for example, we have to use slash. For example, every five seconds would mean this. Every five seconds of every fifth minute would look like that. If, for example, we would like to run this job every five minutes only, uh, we just put zero here. So it means that when the seconds are zeroed, then every five minutes run this job. Now a little bit more real life example. Let's say we want to run a job that processes some transactions at 6 p.m. every day. Then we can write it like this. So it means that it will be at 6.00 runs. And we can also specify that it should work uh, only on weekdays. So in the last column, that means the day of the week, we can put 
Monday till Friday. Format is a little bit confusing, so it's usually good to use something like Crontab Guru or any type of website that will help you a little bit to, to shape and understand the cron expression. Just keep in mind that these websites are usually meant for the cron utility from Linux, so the format is a little bit different, and in particular, it doesn't have a seconds here. So for example, we can take the cron expression that we just wrote over here, just we need to skip seconds and put it to the website and this will give us a very nice explanation what does this expression actually mean. There is one important thing to remember that all the scheduled jobs by default run on single thread. And what does it mean? It means that if we have a multiple jobs that will run pretty much at the same time, I will just copy it here. and make this one also just run every every second. If this job blocks the blocks the thread, the second job will not really be able to run until the first one is over. So if we run it, we will see how it actually works. They both should start immediately after context is up. So theoretically, we would expect that they run exactly at the same time. But since this job blocks the thread from for one second, then it means that the some job number two will run after this one is over. And this is important because if we have a job that runs for a couple of minutes, then you need to take into consideration that if you don't change the default configuration, no other job will run at the same time. But fortunately, this configuration can be changed. Spring Boot starting from version 2.1 has a special namespace for scheduled tasks. And here we can decide what is the pool size of the, of the thread pool dedicated for scheduling. So by default, it has just a size one. But let's say if we assign 10 to it and restart the job, it will take each one of these jobs on a different thread in case the previous thread is already occupied. We will be able actually to see it nicely if we get rid of this ugly system out println and use logger instead. So now we can see what is the name of the thread that jobs run on and we can see that it always takes one of the 10 threads that we have assigned to the, to the thread pool. This is actually it. So in less than 15 minutes, we covered all the basics about running scheduled tasks in Spring Boot. There are also a couple of uh, more advanced topics and in particular, how to run a scheduled jobs in a cluster environment when we have multiple instances of the same application running at the same time, but we don't want to execute scheduled jobs on all of them at the same time. There are multiple ways how it can be approached, but there are, I think, two more, the most popular solutions is one to use a Quartz scheduler that Spring Boot has also support for it. And another one that plays very nicely with a scheduled annotation is called a Shadlock. It's, a, it's not a Spring library. And it just provides a way to lock a particular job to a server using some external data stores. Shedlock works nicely with Mongo, with Dynamo, with any SQL database, and also a few others that are listed here. You will find a link to Shedlock in the description, but it's definitely a little bit longer topic, not for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please click the like button down below, and I hope to see you in the next video.